Hey everyone, Joshua Hinlin here, and today I'm at the Springfield, Missouri Bricks and Minifig store, and we're gonna be showing you some of the fantastic products that are available here at the store. So if you'd like to introduce yourself and then tell people a little about the store here and we'll take a look around. Sure, hey everybody, I'm Phil Weiss. I'm the owner, my wife and I own this location, and we're only about four months old, but we really love our store, <laughs> it's super fun. Perfect, we can start over here in this direction with some custom models. So this is something that the locals might be familiar with. Tell us about this display here. Yeah, this is a local artist, a guy named Harold has built this. It's about six feet tall. We estimate about 30,000 bricks. It's Hammond's Tower, the tallest building in Springfield. And it's pretty amazing. I have not seen this building in person, but it looks very imposing, a little dystopian almost when you look at this, the photos, very black and blocky. That's why we have Lord Business at the top. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. And then next to that is this really nice, what, what material is this minifig made out of? It is metal. Oh, it's me wow. Yeah, okay. it's welded. Okay. At first, it looks like cardboard at first when, cause it, when you first look at it, but yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, it's three parts, just like a real minifigure, <laughs> welded together with bolts and nuts. Very cool. And as we move this direction, you have your party room, but your party room is a little unique here as we kind of head inside here. You've got a variety of really great stuff on display, starting with this fantastic table displays. What is this? This is our work in progress for the store. We have our custom build. Uh, we're about three months into building it, and as you can see, we've done quite a bit but there's a lot of little details we want to add in. We're trying to represent a bunch of different themes and biomes, but it's just been a whole lot of fun to, to work on it together. And then of course the track there kind of running against the wall as well. It's a bit hidden, but yeah, we have the derby track for the parties. They run, a, run the cars down here. And some more custom stuff. So what are some of these examples around here? This is largely people from the LUG, the local Lego group have made some awesome creations. We've got some over here, over here, a wide variety. I love this, this little, this castle build right here, that super cool tower. Yeah, that's a, a local YouTube guy named Parker the Lego guy. And he's, he's in here all the time, bringing us some cool stuff. Very nice. Shout out. Check out Parker on YouTube. <laughs> this has got the, a variation of the world map, which I think the, you've got the world map set out there. I saw on the wall earlier, so we might see that later on. We do. It's super fun to just see the things that people come up with in their brains. They're much smarter than I am. <laughs> and what is this the start of over here? So the local lug group has come in here and using our bricks, they're building a brick quest game. And they're really into it and trying to make it as complicated and, and hard as possible. But we're going to donate it to the board game store behind us so there can be some Lego represented there. Yeah, that's really cool and kind of incorporating it into the surrounding stores and stuff. That's a really neat idea I like that. A mm -hmm. little bit of educational material here on the desk. <laughs> that's right, some fun stuff. Very cool. And then what else is this room used for? What types of gatherings and events have you had here? Mainly for birthday parties for kids and adults, uh, <laughs> but we have some other kind of educational stuff we're gonna be doing here as we continue to get going. Yeah, there we go. Well, we'll head back out to the main store here and keep taking a look at more of what you've got on display. The, the kind of first section on this wall is kind of older, uh, it looks like mostly retired sets. Is that a lot of what's here? That's right. These are just the, the pre-built sets that people have brought in, uh, traded or sold with us, which is one of the best parts about being here. And uh, we just have them on display and people will buy them and trade them again. I love this set here. This is one of the sets I had growing up. Fantastic pieces. Had the elephant, which was so much fun. Really cool, like unique minifigures and accessories you see over here on the left. So this was, uh, the, the whole Johnny Thunder stuff is just fantastic and I love that set there. And then we've got one of the police boats. I think this is one that might actually float. Uh, I think so. It does, it even has a counterweight in the back. Okay, too. there you go. Uh, some older Technic stuff down here as well. A little helicopter and plane. Yeah, it's amazing the variety of stuff that we, we have come in, stuff I didn't even know existed. We'll just walk through the door. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they've released so much over the years. <laughs> this great soccer display with the, with the box as well. How often does stuff come in with the box if it's older like that? Is that rare or how? It's a little bit rare, but there's a lot of people who are smart kids, you know, save the box <laughs> instructions and they're super proud to bring it in and it looks great on the shelf. And then, just kind of collections of smaller sets and pieces. One thing that caught my eye here is these really old minifig pieces. Yeah, this is just kind of, we find a lot of miscellaneous stuff, really cool stuff. 
doesn't fit in a box or maybe it's only partial set, so we'll put them in these little clamshells and uh, they sell really well. And what is in the glass case here? Here we have even more custom creations from some of our local artists, kids and adults again. Some really fun stuff. I love that Titanic up top there. It's such a nice, like just very finished looking display model. Looks like something you, someone could have in their office or something similar to the, the architecture type idea set. It is, and it was a, like a 10 year old kid made that. Wow. Again, blows my mind. <laughs> And I want to point out this display up here, a little bit of a non-traditional, so it looks like we've got Groot with, is that a brick-built cassette under there? It is, yeah, it's the, the Groot set that came out yeah. not too long ago. And there's a local artist who does wood, wood structures, and so he made that for us for our Groot. Okay, very cool. With someone like that, is that someone who was an existing LEGO fan and came into the store? Did you kind of reach out to them and ask for that? or We've just happened upon, upon them. They come into the store and his son is a LEGO lover and so they came in here for that reason. <laughs> but then he was like, hey, wait a minute, we could do something fun. So voila. There we go. And as we've been walking by here, the massive tables of bulk piled, piled very high, as you can see there. So I know we're towards the end of the, the day here, so I'm sure there's been many people digging through looking for all those pieces today. Yeah, there's been a lot of people looking. We had some special deals at the, for the bulk today and okay. yesterday. So people were just crazy digging through it, and uh, they got a lot of good stuff. Are there special times of the month or anything when people can come in and get those deals? Or is that something you do regularly or just kind of off and on depending on the time of year? It really just depends. When we get a lot of bulk is when we'll do a sale. And gotcha. we, we get a lot all the time, so it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot to sort through. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And some more great sets over here, like this uh, Lego house set is fantastic. This old Prince of Persia uh, Lego Brickmaster set as well. So some older, rarer things there, and then some more adventures the fantastic flip up packaging. Always love to show that off, so cool. I wish when they, when they re-released the Eldorado Fortress, they would have like brought that back as part of that kind of reinventing the set. That would have been amazing. That would be great. <laughs> That's one my brother had I was jealous of as a kid. It's such, <laughs> such a good set. <laughs> and as we move into this set back corner, this looks like it's mostly sealed stuff back here. That's right, this is more of the new in box stuff that we get from Lego. A lot of people like the used stuff, but a lot of people also like the brand new in box, so we try to carry a bit of both. One thing that caught my eye are these two great murals up here. Where did those come from? That's also another local artist. Him and his kids are, are Lego lovers, and they just came in here, and uh, we just sort of brainstormed these ideas, and I said, hey, this is what I'd like, and he made it an amazing reality. That's amazing. I love all the collaboration with the other artists around the store, and just kind of representing the local community as well as just fantastic various forms of lego art it's not just the lego builds themselves yeah that's one of the great things we love is just the lego community coming together and sharing ideas and skills and abilities and some more superhero themed stuff on the wall over there gotta have the superhero. <laughs> that's fantastic as we head around this section here you start to get into uh, the outside walls here, what, some of the kind of third-party products that you carry? That's right, this is, this is more like base plates and weapons and things that LEGO doesn't really make. Uh, so they, they complement the stuff that we sell here, the LEGO stuff, really well. And we have a lot of people that are interested in these types of product. Yeah, a really great products like Brick Arms and Brick Forge there, just things that we see used in a lot of the builds that we cover at conventions and stuff that fans really, really love. It's super high quality and really just as good quality as what LEGO does, which I think uh, a lot of people don't realize that there are these third-party companies doing such amazing products out there. Yep. Yeah, we really like the, the Go Figure displays do really well and uh, Slab Dream Lab. All of their plates are really popular. They have such a great variety. And then we've started working with a company called Brick Shell Cases. It has these really good quality cases. Some of them are specific to different themes, which are really cool. Nice. And then what do we have on the wall up here? It looks like a variety of all sorts of stuff. It is a very eclectic collection of just <laughs> cool stuff that we thought would be really neat to have just on display. Spice the place up a bit. <laughs> Why not? You know, you've got the space. <laughs> and we can head in, I think, behind the scenes now as well a little bit. So this will be kind of a look uh, where the magic happens. You can be an honorary employee. Oh, there we go. For at least a minute here. 
And when you first walk back here, I think this pile of Star Wars sets is just, <laughs> just <laughs> really blows your mind. I, I don't envy whoever is having to work through all that. So take us through, I guess, a little bit of the behind the scenes process here is, I'm sure there's a method to a bit of this madness. How does all this work? There is more of a method than you might think, but yeah, we get a lot of stuff comes in and it comes in not always in perfect shape. A lot of times it needs cleaning, it needs repair. And so these are in a variety of states of cleaning or, or, or needing repair. So this is all Star Wars. At least we got it by theme. That's one step. <laughs> but, uh, but we'll be putting these out as we have more spots on the shelves. So are these all complete basically at this point? You're just kind of waiting for space or are these things that maybe need pieces found and added to them? Probably about half of them are complete. Most, they all should be clean at this point. But uh, when we need the space, we'll look and say, okay, what will fit there and we'll add the extra pieces if needed and put it out. And then you've got tons more organization over here. So what is in these shelves in this section? Yeah, we are a newer store, so we're still figuring out our organization in the back here. But we just have more and more shelves we've added and different containers to try to make sure, hey, do we have a cup where we have Prince of Persia minifigs or parts to Prince of Persia minifigs? And so we're getting there little by little. Is the goal to eventually get to a point where you've kind of like built up that you know, backlog of parts where it's like, okay, we got a set from this theme. We probably have those parts in this section here. Is that sort of what you're going for? Yes, for sure. It's, it's come in really handy to already have some parts uh, sorted out because then we can really easily go and complete sets and find parts for people as they need them. Yeah, very nice. I think it's coming along nicely. So I'm sure, uh, what you've only been around a few months as, as you, you know, have more time, you'll get this more figured out. Yeah. Very cool, so that's a nice look behind the scenes there. As we come back out here, you get these really nice 360 display cases. What do you keep in this section? So right now, this is mainly Star Wars. We do have a bit of other stuff here, some older sets, which are really cool as well. People, this is kind of a main attraction point for people. I love the pirate sets here, like this one on the bottom, the uh, pirate island, and you even got the box underneath there with the instructions. Very cool, and some of the smaller pirate stuff here as well. That always catches my eye. But then of course you've got, you know, your giant Star Wars sets as, as always. <laughs> yeah, quite, quite the contrast. <laughs> In front of that is the, the ball figs here and the mini fig maker. So between those two, does one tend to be more popular than the other or kind of draw different crowds? Definitely the mini fig maker people are just constantly here. There's just almost always a circle of people building really cool stuff. And it, it, it's really fun to see what people put together, whether it's their family members or some crazy character, it's, but uh, it's very popular. Yeah. And the ball figs more if somebody's looking for maybe that complete mini fig already. Yeah, some kids don't feel that creative, so they'll grab something out of here. Or their mom says, hey, you got two minutes to pick something. <laughs> oh, they'll grab it real quick. And then there are tons of cases of sets towards the front here, which also are in glass. So you kind of get a really nice perspective and view on them. Is this always just kind of a variety of everything? It is, and we have quite a high turnover of these here. We, we tried to keep them by theme at first, but it was just so hard to, <laughs> to keep moving everything around. There's a, quite a variety at right now. Mm-hmm. I see uh, this, this one down here also with the fantastic kind of snowy architecture looks fantastic. And then you've got some Minecraft stuff as well. So uh, really nice variety like you were saying. I think it's just really impressive and tons of superhero stuff. Older Harry Potter sets. Mm -hmm. is, is there anything that you kind of hope comes through the door at certain points? Is there anything you've kind of been looking for? You're hoping like a theme or a specific set? The pirate stuff was always my favorite as a kid and okay. really still is. Uh, but I just like seeing the old sets, especially ones that I had no idea existed from around the same time I was collecting Legos as a kid. It's like, how did I not know that existed? <laughs> so that's kind of fun. What is this wall of parts over there? That's the premium part. So we spend a bit of extra time pulling out stuff that we know people are always looking for so they don't have to go through and dig. There are some of those parts out in the table but this just makes it easy for people to find that really cool stuff to finish off their mocks in particular. Very helpful, yeah. And you can see some great parts there and really great colors represented too. Mm -hmm. And we'll, then right next to that is a case of some Abby Dabbles products. We see them at conventions a lot. Their stuff is absolutely fantastic. So it's really cool to see that represented here as well. Like we said earlier with those third party products, these are more of kind of the established kits and everything, which look really cool. And I'm sure is nice, especially for the kids to have something smaller. Yeah, they're really neat. We've just started carrying these and they're super popular. They just kind of fill a gap again of stuff that Lego doesn't really make. And people, people just are always wowed by this one little carousel. 
And what are these cases of minifigs there on the wall? We have some custom minifigs from three different companies. We have Big Kid Bricks, Minifigs.me, and a local guy named Engineerio. His real name is Paul, but he has just become an official vendor for bricks and minifigs. For yeah, bricks and minifigs. So there's some really cool custom minifigs. Again, that most of them are ones that Lego doesn't actually make. So this is a cool option if you really want that one minifig that Lego doesn't have. Yeah. Well, do you take any kind of requests or anything like that if someone comes in and says, oh, I'd really love to have a minifig of this person or this thing? Will you reach out to any of these companies to try to get that, or is, what is that process like? We do. We already have done that with the engineerio. Paul, the local guy, he's super talented. You tell him a character. I've done it personally. Okay. And he will come up with a creation really quickly, and then he can produce one or 50, whatever you need. <laughs> Fantastic. That is super cool. Yeah, I love that. As we move down here to the cases, you get into the animal section first, which always has the dinosaurs always catch my attention. You guys have a really nice variety there. I think that looks fantastic. You've got these fantastic older castle minifigs here, even some sealed as well, which is super fun to see. And then uh, pirates and all sorts of really great stuff is always super cool as well. And as we move around to the front here of the checkout area, you also get into, it looks like superheroes, and then kind of your specialty Disney minifigs displayed up there? That's right, that's again from the brick shell cases, a custom display they made for the series, uh, the Disney 100, the new ones, really neat. This section uh, in the middle is super packed, so what all does that include? Oh man, this is the, the CMFs, the collectible minifigs, we have a whole bunch from those series, and then on the bottom, some other random stuff from different series like Lone Ranger and Disney, and just a bunch of scary creatures. <laughs> And is this some special minifigs up here? These are some that one of our staff made, uh, some custom Star Wars minifigs that again don't exist. Nice. But we just used random parts from, from regular Star Wars characters. I think the one in the middle is definitely my favorite. Yes, he's super popular. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Star Wars, you have a massive case full of tons of Star Wars minifigs here as well. We do. This is one of the most popular places here for the minifigs, all the Star Wars. You have to have them. And then on the back there, you see tons more open sets as well. Uh, you got some of the older like pirate ships. Uh, you've got that great, I think, Exoforce set over there as well, and the, the big green wheels on that, which is a super cool looking set. Of course, the massive Titanic there, trains. So uh, again, kind of some of everything on display there. How do you decide kind of with the store layout of where things are gonna go when you've got sets like that? Usually the ones we put back here, since they're a little bit harder to see, are the, the bigger sets. Uh, that you can see from a distance or we can always grab them for for you but again some of it comes down to where do we have some holes we need to fill because there's so much turnover mm -hmm. no really really nice looking displays there i think there's one last section of minifigs we didn't touch on yet uh you've got of course all the minecraft just super popular and it looks like maybe ninjago down there yep yeah we have ninjago a bunch of other random stuff as well you have to have your trolls and teenage mutant ninja turtles so there's, there's a fan of every series out there here in Springfield, so it's fun to see who comes in looking for what. Yeah, well, this is a fantastic store here. So you've got so many great products in here, and I know you've only been around a few months, but do you sell anything online, or do people have to come into the store if they want to check stuff out? We don't currently. We'll get there someday, but we've been trying to focus on our local community uh, just to kind of get that kick started, get people used to trading and selling, uh, but we'll get there eventually. Okay, nice. What is your, your online presence like in general? Do you have social media and stuff? What, what types of updates do you put out there? People may want to keep track of what you're doing and what sets are coming in. Yeah, we post pretty much daily on Facebook, Instagram. It's Springfield BAM, Springfield B-A-M. Uh, but yeah, there's always something interesting to post about around here. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much for the tour around the store. There's lots of unique things here from the art and the custom buildings. Of course, all of the incredible Lego products that are available. So for everyone watching, if you ever are passing through the Springfield, Missouri area, make sure you check this store out. We'll have links to the website and all of the social media in the description of the video as well. Thank you. Thank you very much.